when I hear notions of success, I think tests, exams, being evaluated on how well I may know the material. I would have never thought to associate traditional notions of success to white supremacy. I've been in school practically my whole life from since I was three years old. I grew up programmed to understand that in order to move forward to the next grade and achieve a higher education, I would have to successfully meet the educational standards. And if you didn't, you were out back a grade. So when someone didn't meet these standards, these students were made fun of. They were called stupid, dumb, and idiot. And so this added pressure to those students. They had to work harder. Or better yet, they felt the need that they had to work harder. Traditional notions of success affected my self-esteem. So growing up, I struggled with math, mainly because I didn't practice it, so I wasn't good at it. My parents also did not promote and teach good studying skills at home, uh, and I don't blame them because I didn't think that they knew any better, and so I didn't know any better. And as a result, I failed. I failed grade 7 math, then grade 8, then grade 9, to the point my school isolated me from the rest of my peers and I had to work through a math booklet in a separate room. At this point, I felt like giving up. I honestly didn't want to attend classes anymore. So where do we start? What I took from lecture was we can start by co-creating what success looks like and feels like for each student. And so creating environments where doing what you love or what you are good at is equal to success. I mean, I myself, I'm a visual learner and I thrive in areas in where I can put my creativity at work. So seeing that my creativity can equal success is definitely an ego booster and honestly make me feel more confident in my schoolwork. So my first day of class in university, it was Chem 110, I sat front row. As the professor went through the syllabus that was displayed from a projector onto the big screen in one of the biggest lecture halls at UTM. So I think this lecture hall can host about 500 students. I nearly had a heart attack because when I saw the mark breakdown and that my final exam was equal to 40% and my tests was an additional 40%. I remember thinking, wow, university is definitely a whole different ball game. I came from having to be assessed in different ways during high school to the point where I had to reprogram my brain the first year of university because I no longer could put my creative skills to use and I was no longer being assessed on them. So how can I go from not raising my hand anymore when I've been programmed to do so for as long as I could remember? Or how do I learn to communicate orally because I am so used to communicating on paper? The most difficult task is not teaching, but rather unteaching and unlearning. This point stood out to me. Presently, I still struggle with communicating orally. I mean, I'm always thinking, did I use this word in the right context or am I articulating myself well? I start to think these things when communicating because I'm so programmed to write things down on paper that I find myself having to write things out first on a sheet of paper to avoid stumbling on my words. I mean, the first thing I learned in school was how to write my name. But the real question is, or the big question here is, can this be accomplished? Of course it can. And it starts within the classroom. <laughs>